We encounter a lot of difficult integrals in many areas of math and physics. One technique to deal with these integrals is called differentiation under the integral sign. Integrals such as sine of x over x and optics can be integrated, x squared minus 1 over natural log of x used in number theory, and even integrals like f of x times e to the minus k times x squared can be integrated. That one in particular is used in theoretical physics and statistics. Today we'll look at the integral of sine of x over x. Here is a graph of it. We see that it oscillates and that the oscillations decrease as a function of x. To use the method, we have to add a parameter to our original integral. And we'll assume that the integral can be written as a fraction, with the numerator being also a function of b. Now, we'd like to eliminate the denominator from the integral. So, since the method is called differentiation under the integral sign, we'll take the partial of the integral and hope that by doing this, the denominator is eliminated. To ensure this happens, we'll demand that the partial of f equals g of x times f of x b. Now, if we demand this, this implies that taking the partial derivative of the integral will result in an integral of f of x of b. Now, if this integral is computable, then we're in business, and we can compute the original integral after taking another integral with respect to b and adding boundary conditions. Now, there are two conditions, basically, for differentiation under the integral sign to work in this case. First, f of x of b must have a known antiderivative with respect to both parameters. Secondly, i of b must have explicit boundary conditions. Now, taking the partial of f and demanding that it equals g of x times f of x b is similar to eigenvector problems in matrix theory. For instance, the operator in our case is the derivative operator or the partial derivative operator and our eigenvector is f of x of b and the eigenvalue is g of x. Now we're going to split the partial derivative into differentials and move them to each side and then take the partial integral of both sides. If we do this we get the following. Notice that the constant is actually a function of x. Solving for f of x of b, we get that it equals e to the power of g x times b plus the constant function. Now, let's look at a more general integral so that we can understand the original one better. If we look at this one, we see that it can be written as a fraction, with the numerator being uh, exponential and the denominator being x. Now, we already have a formula for f of x of b, so if we look at the corresponding fractions, then we see that g of x must equal x, and the constant function must equal i times x. Now, looking at our original integral, we would like to relate the two. We see that if we set b to 0, and if we take the imaginary part of the integral, we get sine of x over x. So if we can integrate i of b, then we can obtain our original integral. Now i of b is uh, very integrable, so as long as we take the partial derivative, we'll eliminate that denominator and be able to integrate it. Now we see that the denominator goes away, and if we combine the exponentials, we get something that is very easy to integrate. See, we just move down the terms in the exponential, and we apply the boundary conditions, and we get as long as b is less than zero, of course. And we split into the real and imaginary parts for convenience. So we get that the partial of i of b equals negative b over b squared plus 1 plus i over b squared plus 1. Now, 
if we integrate this with respect to the other parameter, we'll get our original integral back. Now we can see that we can do both of these integrals, and I'll do both of them, but note that since we want the imaginary part, we don't technically need to do the first one. I just do it for completeness. Now we get that the integral equals negative half times the natural log of b squared plus 1 plus i times the arctangent of b plus c. Now c is the constant and it's not a function. So taking the imaginary part of this, we get sine of x over x times e to the b times x. And this equals the arctangent of b plus c. So now that we have the integral, we need to find out what c is. Noting that we can apply the boundary condition, that as b goes to infinity, well negative infinity, that the integral equals zero, since the exponential will become increasingly small as b decreases, we can solve for c by also taking limit on the other side. Now, the arctangent of b as b goes to negative infinity equals negative pi over 2. And this implies that c must equal pi over 2. So now that we have that, we can see that our original integral can be related to our generalized integral. This implies that sine of x over x equals pi over 2.